Super Savage uh, 789 here, bring you guys a video. And today we're doing What If Bardock was a Legendary Super Saiyan Part 2. Now I know what you might be thinking. Where's Part 1? Well, that's actually on Homeboy Danchi's channel. So yeah, go over there, watch Part 1, come back, watch Part 2. While you're there, subscribe, because he does some good stuff. Up and coming YouTuber, and uh, yeah, one of the greats. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. A few years would have passed since the death of Frieza, with the Saiyans prospering under their own rule. Bardock would have maintained a lot of goodwill he got from the Saiyans, with a lot of pushing to go on missions with them. Despite this though, Bardock actually does the opposite, choosing to go on solo missions due to him knowing he's more than capable of taking down any opponent he comes across. With no opponents like Frieza ever showing themselves, Bardock wouldn't ascend into Super Saiyan again, which is probably a blessing due to him having no control over that state. He'd likely train his raffle form, learning how to go into our will and how to actually control it. I'm sure it won't be too hard for him to perfect this form, as he's already learned to control Ozaru, so this is just the next natural step. Raditz and Kakarot also get a lot of popularity from the Saiyans thanks to their father's reputation. Reputation. Despite them having his genes, neither have shown any traits of the Super Saiyan. While this is considered to be weird, the Saiyans still continue to treat them well and go on missions with the boys. This popularity would lead to a lot of resentment from people who are loyal to the king, especially the prince and King Vegeta himself. Vegeta and Nappa end up going on a lot of missions, fighting opponents they know are above them for the sole purpose of getting stronger. If anyone is a Super Saiyan, it has to be Vegeta, not some low class trash. Raditz would also still be in the same squad as in canon with Nappa and Vegeta here, and Kakarot would even be on a squad of his own in this timeline. He'd be paired up alongside Broly, Paragus, and some other nameless Saiyans. Word would eventually get back to King Vegeta about Raditz being assigned to his son's squad, and Kakarot being on Paragus's crew. Another thing noted and sent to the king was Bardock's power after returning from his missions, with the king actually becoming worried at the Super Saiyan's increase in strength over time, along with his kids. After some thought, King Vegeta decides to get rid of Bardock and his kin entirely. So Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta are doing business as usual, conquering another planet and eventually wipe out the population, as they've done with many worlds before. Once finished, Raditz to begin making his way back to their pods, but realizes that Nappa and Vegeta are coming for some reason. He turns around and asks what they're doing. They're gone. Raditz begins to look around, wondering where they went to, and then feels a powerful blow to the back of the head while he was off guard. This nearly knocks the young warrior out, and he falls to the ground. He looks up and sees the figures of Nappa and Vegeta standing above him, both smirking and saying they've always wanted to kill the runt. Before Raditz can even voice his worries, Nappa grabs him by the tail and flings him to the air, allowing Vegeta to unleash a powerful Gallic gun. The purple light envelops him, and when the smoke clears, no signs of Raditz are left. The two then begin making their way back to planet Vegeta, making sure to destroy Raditz's pod to hide any evidence. Now we can transition to another alien world. On this planet, Kakarot and his squad mates were conquering it as they normally would, making quick work of the alien civilization. As they were finishing things up, Kakarot is suddenly blasted from his back and is sent flying into the debris of a nearby city. He quickly got up and was met by a punch to the face from one of the nameless Saiyans. Another then joined in, and then another and another, as Kakarot was ganged up on by his own crew. Kakarot tried to fight back as best as he could, but he was at a disadvantage in both power and numbers. Even Paragus was in on it, getting his own shots in on Kakarot through his fists and blaster. The only one of his squad that didn't gang up on Kakarot was Broly, as even though he would be more like normal Saiyans here, he still got a kind heart. The two had grown a rivalry and even what some would call a friendship with each other after all the missions they've gone on together. The Saiyans completely threw Kakarot around, pummeling him, but this led to something they didn't expect. Kakarot's power began to rise as he became increasingly angered at what was going on. Kakarot then let out a primal scream as his power skyrocketed, his hair spiking up and standing on end as his eyes flashed into a golden yellow color. His aura became green as the overwhelming power pushed the nameless Saiyans back, and finally he roared as he burst into the Akari form. Kakarot charged in a berserk state as he completely turned the tide of the battle, smacking them all around. Even when they tried ganging up on him, this didn't do anything more than make Kakarot more angry. This led to Broly having to jump in, fighting back against Kakarot while trying to calm him down. This didn't work at all, with Kakarot simply knocking Broly around along with the other Saiyans. Finally, Kakarot yelled as he threw Broly to the side. He turned his head, targeting Paragon and the Nameless Saiyans. One by one, the Nameless Saiyans were all slaughtered, as Broly watched on, unable to do anything. Finally, he got to Paragus, killing him as well. Broly watched his father fall to the ground, and the Elder Saiyan lifted his hand out towards his son. With his final breath, Paragus told Broly to survive before Kakarot opened his mouth, blasting him into nothing. Broly's eyes and body began to twitch violently as Kakarot turned towards him, the last one left. Broly yelled that he won't let him get away with this, and screamed that he'll end Kakarot right here, right now. As his body shook, storms of lightning erupted around the gentle warrior as Kakarot watched on. Broly's hair began to flicker in and out of a golden color as his eyes did the same but with a shining green. Kakarot simply laughed at Broly's sorrow, but this only resulted in the gentle warrior completely snapping. With a deafening roar, Broly screamed out as his power soared, a golden aura consuming him 
to the point Kakarot needed to shield his eyes from the bright light. The light then faded around Broly, revealing that he had transformed into a Super Saiyan. Broly then turned towards Kakarot, his gaze even making Kakarot feel sort of scared. The duo then began to fight, with neither one truly having an advantage. While Broly had more of his sanity left, Kakarot's strength began to rise to a point where Broly was at a disadvantage. It led to a prolonged battle that lasted quite a while, with both of them standing on their last legs. They didn't have much energy left, and Broly knew he had to end this while he still could. In one final act, both of them powered up to their maximum and lunged at each other. Gold energy coated Broly's fist and green surrounding Kakarot's. Then a deafening boom is heard as the two punches collide with each other with the last of their power. The duo fall to the ground after this exchange, falling back to their base forms unconscious. Now we switch over to Bardock. He was on another solo mission, as was typical for him. There were occasions where he got missions of his own squad, but for the most part he went solo, as he had the power to take on anyone that came his way. Anyways, Bardock was easily wiping out this planet and its population as he normally did, but as you can probably tell, things aren't what they seem. King Cold arrives on the planet, with Bardock being alerted of his power. The King steps out of his ship, surprised to see the Saiyan had already come to him. He welcomed the Super Saiyan, and said that this is where he would fall. Bardock scoffed at him, and powered up into his Akali form, staring down the tyrant. King Cold laughed at the Saiyan, telling him that if he thinks that's enough to beat him, he's in for a surprise. Bardock then yells as he charges into fight, but King Cold is able to avoid and block his attacks pretty easily. Bardock gets pretty angry, seeing that his attacks aren't doing anything, but before he can think too much about it, the Emperor sways his tail, smacking it against the Saiyan and knocking him down. As Cold begins beating him down, he says that this is disappointing, and wonders how he was able to kill his son. He begins to walk towards the injured Saiyan after tossing him to the ground, and points a single finger at him. Bardock looks on in shock, wondering how this is happening at all. How did King Cold even find him? How could he fail like this? All these thoughts of him failing and his family being slaughtered as a result of that caused Bardock to become increasingly angered. Cold then laughs, asks if he hurt the monkey's feelings before he fires a death beam at his knee, forcing Bardock to fall over to the ground in pain. He punches the ground, yelling that it won't end like this. King Cold fires another death beam, this through his shoulder. Bardock gets flashbacks of how Frieza tortured him and screams out in rage. His power flares up as his aura becomes massive and King Cold is shocked by this power. Bardock roars for the air and he rises from his ground as his hair becomes golden along with his aura. King Cold realizes that it's too late as he made the same mistake Frieza did. He unleashed the demon. Bardock then screams as he goes berserk, charging at King Cold and slamming the tyrant to the ground. Bardock unleashes a flurry of punches and kicks, knocking and beating the Emperor around. Continuing his assault, with King Cold not being able to do anything to fight back, Bardock yells as he kicks the Emperor into a mountain. All the damage he'd done on him stacking up. As Bardock lands and begins walking towards King Cold, he begins to beg and plead for his life. King Cold promises Bardock anything he desires. Power, wealth, fortune. All of that could be his if he spared him. Of course, it doesn't do anything, and Bardock proceeds to punch through King Cold. As Cold begins dying from his wound, he continues to beg for his life and revealed that King Vegeta set him out, paying him to kill Bardock. Bardock, even in his berserk state, is shocked at the revelation as he falls back to base. He begins to walk away, with the only thing in the air being the pleas from King Cold. And before he leaves, Bardock fires a blast to finish off the dying Emperor. Bardock makes his way back towards the pod. He says the destination for planet Vegeta and rockets off towards home, knowing that King Vegeta had tried to get him assassinated. And so, Bardock eventually made it to planet Vegeta. He stepped out of his pod, flying away from the small crowd that had begun to gather at his arrival. He flew towards the king's castle, finally landing at the doorstep. King Vegeta spat out while he was drinking upon seeing Bardock arrival, ordering his guards to kill the Saiyan. In the blink of an eye, all of them were knocked out on the floor. Bardock was standing closer to the king. He had a stern look in his eyes and got straight to the point, telling the king that he wanted to fight him to the death, right here, right now. Whoever won would be the king of the Saiyans. King Vegeta was scared to hear this, knowing of Bardock's insane power, but agreed as if he didn't, he knew everyone would see him as a coward and usurp him anyway. The two then walked out of the castle, going to an arena where a crowd had begun to gather, as word very quickly spread of the fight that would decide who'd be king. Both Bardock and Vegeta stepped into the ring, with roars and cheers on both sides. Some cheered for Vegeta, while the majority cheered for Bardock. The two then began to fight. Bardock was clearly overpowering and overwhelming the king in just his base form, before he ramped up even further and went into his Akali state. He didn't even really need it, but he decided to show off the power, so now that all the Saiyans were there, he'd be able to put them in their place. In one final desperate act, King Vegeta charged in and threw punch after punch, but he didn't even flinch, as he let the punches connect. Bardock then proceeded to open his mouth and unleash a mouth blast that completely obliterated King Vegeta. People then began chanting and cheering for their new king, shouting King Bardock. Bardock then tells them all to shut up, stating that yes, he will be the new king of the Saiyans. More cheers roared out from the Saiyans as they brought Bardock to the king's castle, opening a path for him to walk to his new throne. Bardock walked through the throne room along with his wife Gine as the Saiyans continued chanting King Bardock. The two are now officially declared as the new royal family of the Saiyans.
But guys, that's what we're gonna leave this part for right now. If you enjoyed, why not hit the like button and subscribe as it helps the channel and lets us know you want to see more parts. Remember, part three will be on Danji's channel at some point, I don't know when, and part four will be on mine. And if you haven't already watched part one, it'd be really weird that you're watching part two, but go watch that anyway, because it's peak. I wrote all of it. It was me. And then Danji edited it all. Danji's the go. He edited it all. And he did the thumbnails. So yeah, make sure you go give him some props. Uh, I'm really tired. This recording took way too long. I don't know how long the video is, but yeah. And uh, bye.